Greetings, hello, welcome everyone, welcome to Dev Chatter. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Brendan, uh, I'll, you know, nameplate, and uh, this channel here is obviously Dev Chatter, as you can probably see up above, and uh, <clears throat> glad to see a bunch of people here already. Uh, so we are going to get started now. Um, if you are new to the channel, uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, we're a really welcoming community here uh, at Dev Chatter. Um, you'll get answers from pretty much anyone, either in chat or uh, I will respond to a lot of questions as well. So if you are wondering about anything we're doing, uh, if you're wondering about, you know, just general programming stuff, career advice, anything like that, feel free to chime in with any of those. Uh, we are all, uh, well... <laughs> We're all people that, that like answering questions and helping other people in the community. So if you do have those questions, feel free to uh, jump in with those. Uh, if you've got answers for anyone or, uh, you know, uh, you've got your own experiences you want to chime in with, that's, you know, always welcome as well. So uh, feel free to just chat and generally have fun. We are dev chatter because we like to talk about programming and uh, do a bit of programming as well. What is love? Crimson Green, yay questions. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, 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 I did shake my head. Uh, Crimson Green coming in with the 20 month, 21 month resub. Uh, and uh, let me click the this button. Because uh, while I was setting up... <laughs> we got uh, SNB's uh, 16 month resub as well. Uh, so we are... Uh, <laughs> Gonna get it. Gonna get into our coding today, uh, Crimson. I am sorry I missed you uh, at Code Mash this week. I think you were there. Uh, I did not make it to Code Mash this year. That was uh, this past week. Uh, for anyone that was out for that, uh, I am usually there, but I did not go this year. Uh, took a year off of Code Mash. Um. So, uh, in the past, we have worked on a handful of projects. Uh, today, I asked uh, in our Discord. If you're not a part of our Discord, uh, link in the chat as well as down below. Uh, feel free to hop over there. I asked people today what uh, if, if anyone had suggestions for what we should work on today. And someone suggested doing a uh, programming exercise or kata that was related to something that... Um... Wait, did I, not, uh, did I not hit the group? Hang on a second. Did I not send a message in Discord? It says I didn't. What is love? I will send. <laughs> and uh, Nate coming in with the 17 month resub. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's no fun. Uh, it's always always a bummer to be sick during a conference, Crimson. Uh, so let's see what's going on with chat. Uh, hello, 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 bot stuff, uh, rainbow. Uh, <laughs> I, I attended uh, 10 code mashes in a row, thank you. And uh, Miha, hello, welcome. And Desert Griffin, greetings, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, good night, whatever time it is for anyone. Hopefully you're having a great day. Uh, Ga Galtom84? Uh, there might be a split in there somewhere that I'm not uh, getting, but either way, welcome. Thanks for that follow, much appreciated. Welcome to the stream. Uh, let's see, uh, Angleblade... Uh, the last five minutes attempting to connect to chat, Twitch app, fi oh yeah. Yeah, I have not tried the Twitch app, I usually use the web interface for it, but uh, hopefully it's working well for you. <laughs> and Mr. Shoji, <laughs> thank you very much for the subscript, the uh, Twitch Prime subscription, and welcome to the stream, hi. Uh, and uh, and uh, happy new year to anyone that I haven't spoken to yet this year. Uh, welcome, 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 and uh... Uh, Brave Cobra, SNB, greetings, welcome everyone. Uh, I, I had a bit of fun before the stream because uh, I was taking a look at what stuff I could alter with channel points and I thought this was funny. Um, <laughs> the uh, It looks like this, like uh, if you look over in the chat, it looks like the sunglasses are falling off because he's shocked. I thought it was great. Is hype not working right now? Did, did that, what, really? Really? Guess that's possible that hype's not working, but that's that's shocking. That's like glasses falling off, shock face shocking. Um, okay, so 
The suggestion that was made in our Discord was let's do some programming exercises and specifically uh, the suggestion was, I'm not going to do exactly what the suggestion was, but um, it was uh, Desert Griffin that actually suggested this. Apparently um, you did a, uh, like a coding test at a company and they wanted to see uh, you do something with like parameters and other stuff like that and I was thinking, you know what? We, we do those every once in a while. Miha, thank you very much for the bit. Uh, we, we do those types of programs every once in a while where um, you need to build a console app that takes some kind of input, does some kind of action. Uh, in many ways, that's going to be similar to like writing a, a service uh, nowadays, except obviously for you know the purposes of doing a kata, you're going to probably stick to a console application because that uh, um, removes a lot of the complexity and lets you focus on on the code that you're writing rather than all the external concerns like you know where where you're hosting it out on some uh, server and uh, Galtam I saw you said uh, hi in the chat and uh, if there is a way that I should say your name uh, let me know and I will try to get it right and um, that goes for anyone even if I've been messing up your name for like you know a year <laughs> do let me know and um, thank you very much for the uh, the biddies as well everyone um, also, I should mention, in about a month, we're going to be coming up on our, what is that, two-year anniversary of the stream? Cr Crimes and Gren? Got it, Crimes and Gren. Uh, yes, Brave Cover, we're doing Hello World today, that is, that is correct, hang on, hang on, wait, let's see if it works. Hello world! Oh man, it's done! It ran! Yay, we're done! No, <laughs> we're doing more than hello world. But yeah, we're gonna do, uh, so I wanted to start us with a console app. Uh, if we want to add in uh, unit testing, we can do that as well. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna toss in an X unit project, because that's uh, my preference. But if you like N unit, uh, or you know, you're in another language, so obviously you're not using N unit or X unit, use whatever unit testing framework you like. You could be doing this in JavaScript with unit testing framework as well. Uh, they all, all modern platforms have some way of, of doing unit testing uh, that you should be able to make work in some fashion. Uh, always before you do anything else, whenever you're setting up a unit test project, this run that I just did, where literally there's no code, do that every single time. That way you don't get the like, oh, my test runner is not running for some reason. So don't don't write the test until you know that the runner works. Uh, so, yep, test run. Let's make sure it can fail then too. Uh, hey, Katrina, welcome. Greetings. Uh, oh, yeah. Crimson, thank you for the reminder. I was restarting that. Uh, I killed the bot but didn't start it again yet. So, okay. So we got that, so uh, let's do an assert. Uh, I don't have fail in this. Okay, well, I can do that. Uh, did it actually, did it actually hype? I didn't see, okay, it did. <clears throat> I wasn't watching when we did that. Okay, so tests can succeed, tests can fail. Great. Next thing I want to do is tie my two projects together. So I'm going to wait until the hypes clear up so that we can see the screen again. Uh, so I want these two projects talking. And you'll notice I did not actually uh, care about the uh, the name of that, X Unit Project 1. Uh, yeah, it. I don't really care. This is a coding exercise, so whatever name it uses is fine. Okay, so we want to test something. So let's think of what scenarios we could do. Um, we can uh, make a program that does standard inputs. Um, I probably will go for, we could do something like the string calculator if we want it. Um, we could do separate commands. So we could do we could do a program that has a, a couple of commands. Um, let's see if anyone has any suggestions for console katas. Uh, no. Do you have any interesting katas? I mean, we could always have something take in input and just do the work on it. 
Uh, oh, we could, oh, yeah, we could do something like that. That's, that'd be neat. We could do a, uh, a Morse code translator. That could be fun. That could be fun. Uh... I work bought you know, every subsequent version of Visual Studio Enterprise since uh, initial release, but now they don't want to get the 2019 version. <laughs> uh, what do you tell them to get you to get um, a 2019 uh, version of Visual Studio? The thing is, there's... So I think 2019 is worth getting, but I don't think there's like a specific, uh, like, this thing has to be there, kind of, like, I don't think there's, like, a feature that is the selling point. Uh, and yeah, so, uh, the challenge is that, legally speaking, if you're working for a company, you can't get away with using Community Edition for, like, working, for doing that work. Um, a lot of people do swear by writer, and, and s and is correct. If you are going to do .NET Core 3, that would be the selling point, but that, I think, is it. Uh, I actually know some people that have run into the problem that they need to upgrade because they want to do .NET Core 3. So, if you want to do, like, uh, a project on .NET Core 3.1, you do have to switch to 2019. Uh, so, let's start. We'll make a little program. We're going to make this program be a, uh, a Morse code translator. So, uh, let's, let's have it work in two modes. Here's what I'm thinking. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll scratch some notes and comments here, and this will be like the explanation of what our project is. Actually, I just realized that I've got that project header there. That's not what we're working on. What's this say? Uh, coding exercises. Yep, that's good enough. Uh, yeah, so uh, there, there's definitely um, better testing in, in 2019 than there is in 2017. There's a number of other feature improvements as well, but I don't think any of them are like a, a selling point for the new version is the problem. Um, Coding exercises are against the term of, terms of service, huh? Well, that's too bad. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the modes of... Uh, so we'll, we'll create a couple of modes for this. Uh, one is... Uh, so we'll do shell mode. Uh, and that'll be... Um, letter at a time uh, translation. Uh, and we'll call this message mode. Uh, receives a message as an argument. Returns result. So we're going to build two, two ways of working with this program. So I think this will make for an interesting exercise. So we'll make a shell mode where the user can be in there and we'll do letter to time translation. Uh, and then message mode where it receives a full message and returns back the the translation. So this one would work like a, a standard console application where you know someone could pipe input and we could do the actual standard in if we want, but I'm probably just gonna write it as as an argument for now. Uh, though I can show how you do um, standard input, which would be like piping it into the program. Uh, I'll probably show that because uh, you can do it that way as well. Uh, and then uh, shell mode will just, you know, essentially grab a loop and, and just do the translations one at a time. Uh, this exercise we're doing, uh, I googled console exercise. Someone did something with Morse code, so I'm just coming up with a way of doing it that's slightly different from... I didn't really look at what they were doing. I was just like, oh yeah, Morse code. And so we're just going to do this because why not? <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so... if. Uh, 2019 is faster than 2017, that is true, uh, but I don't know if it's that much faster. Um, Genescu did the... hang on. Did that not... why did that not work for you? Is it not working? Oh, uh, well that's weird, okay. Well, I gotta figure out what's up with that. Um, 
We're apparently having connection issues uh, with these. I need to dig into why that didn't stay connected to, uh, to it there. That's weird. Huh. Okay, well. Either way, should work now. So we'll let that rainbow while we code. Uh, there's a beer, zero business reservation for me to play but I'm so tired. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I agree. That is one of the big problems, is like always having to justify every little expense for things like that is kind of annoying. I agree. Okay. Here's how we're going to start. Let's start over in our unit test project. We're going to do this all TDD style. Uh, and by that I mean like like TD like like you mean it so like hardcore we're gonna start out so um, what is this uh, Morse uh, um, we'll say Morse converter should I don't think it's a terrible name uh, Morse converter should uh, return uh, single code uh, given given one uh, I'll say letter even though it's really a, a character um, so we'll do that uh, so Morse converter uh, so we're gonna say Morse Morse converter So that's the converter. Uh, you know what? I actually think I get, like converter better. So we'll do that. Um, and I'm actually just gonna say convert. Uh, and it's gonna get a single letter. Now, do we want to pass this as a string or a character? That's the real question we want to ask. Uh, I'm gonna start as a string, and maybe we'll change our mind later. Uh, string uh, result. Now, uh, how do I get string? Whoa, I didn't think I typed that, but maybe I did. Next thing I want to do is this. Uh, anyone that has been here before uh, probably knows what library I'm about to go grab. Uh, uh, Nougat, thank you. Fluent assertions. <laughs> yes, exactly, Miha. <laughs> Fluid. Close enough. Fluent assertions. That's what we're going to get. Uh... Because I like fluent assertions. Yeah, that's what I said. Close enough. It, you you knew what I was getting. Uh, all right. So, and there are probably updates for things. Again, on, on katas, I don't usually worry about versions of stuff. I'm just like, yeah, that's good enough. So, we're going to say should be. Uh, all right. Um, do I have a... This will do. Morse code. All right, Morse code wiki, give me a hand. Uh, okay. Are these underscores and dashes, I think? Or are those? No, oh my god, these are... Oh, that is awesome. All right, so where's the actual translation? Here it is. Uh, ooh, e well, I don't know what the difference is going to be, but, uh, well, uh, since it really doesn't matter for the sake of the kata, I'm going to choose the American one because they put it on the left. <laughs> and I don't know what kind of problems are going to result from that, but we'll see. Uh, what is this? Uh, well, there's coding exercise going on. One thing I think uh, is missing from the coding exercise space is complex development. Uh, it always feels like coding exercise is designed in a way that encourages monolithic development with a single god function. 
Uh, so you, you're you're correct. Um, a lot of times in in TDD, you have to be careful that your your thing is not just that. Uh, what you need to remember in the coding exercises, a lot of times you're doing a piece of that. So there are some uh, coding exercises that are designed for uh, they're essentially chapters of it. So you do in the first chapter, you do one piece. In the second chapter, you do another piece, and then you can think of that like a project where you started out building like, oh yeah, we're gonna. You know, write this code that does the uh, calculations for scoring of a bowling game. And then we're going to build a piece that allows you to add and remove players from the game. And then we're going to do a piece that allows you to, uh, you know, add in scores and display them piece by piece. And that is going to then be based on the number of players that exist as well as being able to do the score calculation. So if you split one of those up into three chapters, you build an entire program. Uh, and that's actually one of the keys is that you need to make sure you do those because for calculating a score it really does make sense to only have like one method that just returns back scoring results like one public method we should say you might split it into private methods as well but yeah uh my light turned out hmm. well my uh my green screen is gonna look terrible today then Okay, uh, so I should have this on my clipboard. Oh man, it is. Look at that. It's like a middle dot. I don't know what character that is, but I'm absolutely going to use it because this is fun. Uh, so A is supposed to be a dot and a dash, right? Where, where did I copy that from then that had that? I thought I copied an R. Oh, oh, but I just didn't get the, the last dash. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Huh. Okay, well, either way. So we're going to make a convert method on that, and it's going to give us this, and that's what we expect them to give us back as results. So, uh... Yes. We're using Unicode. Because uh, I decided to put a Unicode character in there. Uh, so we're going to create a Morse converter. Now I have the option, I can put this in my test project or I can put this in my main project. I'm going to put it in the main project, though uh, some people would argue that until it is done, I should keep it in the test project. Um, and I can see a case for that, because that again very much limits the dependencies that you might add to it. Um, okay, so... Uh, Yep, that's the one. So we're going to add a convert method that's going to take in a string and convert it. Which I'm going to change. So I said string already, and I'm going to change that to character already. So we're going to say converts a single character. And we'll return back empty string for now. So it's not going to be an exception, but that should fail our test quite nicely. And you'll notice my name doesn't exactly match just yet. Um. Oh, hey, thank you. Uh. Yeah, I could use these for the for the Unicode instead of uh, I could be doing that instead of those values if I didn't want to actually have it saved as Unicode. Um. But this should still work. Uh, let me look at the results. Uh, so we actually got back empty string. Yep. Okay, uh, so fastest way to make this test pass is return this value, right? <laughs> and we'll see what that gives us. Uh, yes, uh, Anga, uh, we will absolutely be using a generic dictionary. <laughs> yes, all tests pass, all done. Okay, uh, so clearly we're not done. We need to change this up, so what are we going to do? 
I think that we should change this from a fact to a theory. And this is how in uh, XUnit we make it so that you have um, test cases. So a single test function is going to do more than one test. Uh, and so this is going to be string uh, expected and character C. So we're going to put a C there. We're going to put the letter there. Expected there. Now the test should go the same as before, should still pass. Okay. Uh, yes, we do need a ship it command at some point. Okay. So let's make the next one. So this is where we're going to make our test fail. What's B supposed to be? Uh, that's. Like that. Uh, or it looks like it's three of those. And then when we run this, in theory, we should get a fail. Good. So now we can go back to our converter and we can say uh, if C equals A. Do that. Otherwise, return that. There we go. Clearly, clearly that's the way to solve this problem. So, a lot of people ask when, when you do the, like, step-by-step -step simplest thing that works in TDD, they're like, what? you know, like, what's the point? We know we're not going to keep it that simple. And, and the intention there is to make sure that you don't guess an architecture, because a lot of times programmers will be like yeah yeah no you can just solve it with this and sometimes it is right in this case I'm like 90% certain that we're just gonna end up with a dictionary that has those values in it uh, to do the conversion because that's just gonna make sense um, because this is like a dictionary lookup <laughs> like it's textbook dictionary lookup so we're going to have that eventually but this just makes sure that we don't jump the gun okay so let's have a look here let's see uh, okay so it's this twice. Right? Yep, it's that twice. And then D says is that? D is that one? Yep. Okay. So let's run this. We're gonna get a couple of we're gonna get a couple of fails this time. Uh, yeah. So fuel snable. Uh, it will be very similar for this one. It's the next test that I think is gonna be a little bit more interesting. Uh, so uh, so let's make this pass, and then we will uh, change it. So we. C. So this was B. D is this one. C is that one. And now when we run this, should pass. But then what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, go ahead and put in the rest as a dictionary because I think this makes sense. <laughs> yes, 26 branch switch. What are we talking about? We could technically do this as a switch instead of a uh, instead of a dictionary. Uh, and to be honest, doing a character switch would be pretty fast still. It would not be that bad. Um, let's see if someone has a...
Uh, do, 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 do. No, 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 no. I just want the full list in like string version. Copy pasteable, guys. Copy pasteable. Programmer wants a shortcut. That's not copy pasteable. Where is my copy paste? Yeah, I could use a Python one, that'd be fine. Ah, oh, it's funny they did periods instead of that. Ah, oh, it's fine. Yeah, we can use this one. Uh, we're just gonna go to Z, we're not gonna do the numbers. Thanks, Python. Thank you. Um, just for, just for syntax right now, I'm going to do this. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. I'm gonna put that in. Gonna under here, gonna put that in. Equals that. And then I'm going to replace uh, single quote comma with double quote comma in the selection, replace all. Okay. And this is gonna be a dictionary of character string. This will be uh, Morse lookup equals that that one didn't have a whoops there we go all right what what uh, what went on in chat uh Okay, so it did this, we did these, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna replace uh, this character. With this character. In the selection. There we go. So there is our standard just letter lookup code. So that should convert just fine. Now in this case, uh, we have a couple of options. We can do a character dot... Uh, we can convert this to a... Uh, to a single letter and say uh, and we can just say we're gonna blow the heck up if you gave us something invalid in this and we can just do that and take the simple approach Okay. Oh, 
Yep, it would help if I did this. String. I guess I could call this one input. Oh, I these are these are not actually uh, these aren't hyphens. These are dashes. That's funny. <laughs> oh, I hadn't realized that it did that, but that's fine. However, we convert is okay. You know what? We're gonna simplify this. We're gonna leave whatever this did. We're gonna switch back. We're gonna go with the simple one. Bye bye Unicode. Bye bye. We're gonna go simpler. They won't line up and look as nice as these would, because we'll be on two different levels. But it'll probably simplify things if we do it this way. So that becomes dash and then dot dot dot. And then like that. Simplify. Now we don't have to mess with the Unicode, so I don't have to copy and paste anymore, because I can actually just type them. Okay. That's fine. Doesn't look as nice, because they're on the multiple lines now, but it's okay. And just for the sake of doing it, uh, we'll do whatever Z was. That's true, Fuel Snable. Okay. Uh, so we've got that. The next thing that we want to do is test translation of a whole word. So... Should return uh, word code given uh, full word. We'll s word, which obviously doesn't have to be like a dictionary, like actual word in the language. We just mean when we say word, we just mean like sequence of letters here. So uh, Uh, yeah, we could do this, uh, and orange. Some of those words might be a little bit long for this. Uh, that's a good point. So that'll be car. This will be bat, egg, uh, what are some other good words? Uh, exit. That's probably enough words. That's a good point. We probably don't need even that many words. We'll just do three. Three looks good. All right, so apple, bat, and car. So what are we looking for? We're looking for... Uh, A, and then why did I look up A? A was the one that was already there. <laughs> There's P, twice. And then we want L and E. So L. And E's just a dot? Are you kidding me? What? That's crazy. So that's an A. So I need to look up T and R, huh? There's T. Where's R? Derp. Derp. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. So the ways we can do this is uh, we can either make convert do uh, like the whole either do a full string or a single letter and return back and maybe it doesn't actually care what it was. Um, so we'll have it do this. We'll say s dot to upper is the thing. Um, we'll say that that's letters. And then what do we want to return back? We want to return back uh, the join of these. So return, we'll do a string dot join uh, on space and the letters. So, so we'll select from the letters and we'll say Morse lookup of the letter. So this should still work in the previous one. So I'm going to run that first test again because it should still run it just fine. So that is a, a refactor of how this works and should be okay. This is our test of did I just mess that up? And the answer is no. No, I did not. Uh, would you type... Dash it. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes, like the... Yes. No, it's totally valid. The common letters should have very few uh, very few options in there. I, I agree. A makes sense to be small. E makes sense to be small. T makes sense to be small. Uh, I would think I would expect the same thing with R. So actually that's that's kind of surprising to me that that one's as long as it is, but maybe that's because you really can't get them much shorter than three. They can't all be two letter ones. Um, two character ones, two, two beep ones. So when we do this, this actually might just work. Let's just try this. Does that just do it? Did, did we make it pass? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I should have tested this before I did that one. Hang on. Let's do this first. We're going to make sure it failed on the previous one because it was supposed to fail before and then pass, but I forgot to click the run button after we wrote it. Okay, it fails. Good. And then we made it pass. Right. Yay! Hey, Copper Beardy, welcome. Uh, true should equal true. Yes, that's correct. It has been a while, uh, but he here I am doing a coding stream. I am still alive. Rumors of my demise are false. Okay, so we did those piece. We we wrote a little uh, Morse code little thingy. Uh, now. For this next part, we can decide whether, first off, whether or not it's actually worth testing it, um, which is debatable, um, just, and, and by that I mean people really do debate these, is how much should you test the interaction between your application and other applications, as that does uh, get into some interesting territory. So we could say, uh, if... Uh, whoa, not args any. So if there are not any arguments, uh, then we call this shell mode. Uh, otherwise, we just do a single translation and return it back. Right? So we'll create our Morse converter here, and we'll say uh,
Well, I guess we could pass it in for now, and the problem is it's gonna blow up when we give it bad stuff, but, but that's fine. Uh, we'll do that. We'll say pass the first one into that, and only the first thing's getting translated this time, and we'll just see what we end up with. So this should trigger shell mode, that should just do a conversion. So, uh, let's see, uh, in C, uh, yes, yes, thank you, Fuel Snable. Uh, fun fact, in C, if you compare values 1 and 2 when interpreting as a Boolean, it is true. Yes, exactly, Horcrine, anything but, like, zero. Yep. Yep, and, uh, that's not, ju they're not just C, there are some other languages that do that same, same, uh, like, concept of, like, zero is a false, but any any actual value is true, which is really uh, blasphemy to a lot of C-sharp programmers, who are going to be like, wait, what? No, uh, <laughs> that value is not true. That's a completely different value. Why would you consider that to be true? Uh, all right, so what are we going to do? Uh, I was going to make this have a parameter. So... Uh, you're gonna learn the cool file that C Sharp makes now in the .NET Core version if you actually want to... Where is the... Where is it? Here we go. Application Arguments. Uh, what would be a good word to toss in here? Um, oh, I know. We'll do SOS. Because everybody knows that one. So let's run our program. Uh, so why don't I do this? Just so we can see it. So I'm going to open this. Uh, hey, Ronan Engineer, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Uh, here we are. Uh, oh, that is tiny. .NET run. So nothing happens, but if I say, uh, can I just pass, I forget if I just pass arguments, I just type them in like this. No, that doesn't work. Uh, well in that case I'll just run it this way. Oh, actually I think it did work. <laughs> uh, yes, what are you talking about? So there we go, so dot 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 space dash 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 space dot dot dot. So it looks like it does its conversions as we expect. Uh, so that one works. This, I was suggesting we open up like a shell mode. So let's, can we flip these, invert, thank you. So we'll do um, while, uh, Uh, would it be a, do we want to do while this? Um, no, because I still have to declare it. I guess we could do while it and do this string input uh, we'll say uh, keep going while keep going whoops <laughs> oh, that was funny Keep going equals false. Uh, and that should have been true, because I was originally writing that the other way. Why did this want to go... Oh, because uh, this needs a closing on the end. Doesn't it? Uh... 
doesn't it? I'm not crazy, am I? Do wells need something special? That's what it is. Yeah, see, I was writing it wrong. See, I was smoking something. Replace with true. Awesome. Okay, so we'll keep going. Yeah, see, someone was probably like, uh, yes. Type coercion is evil. I agree. Uh, and, uh, welcome, plugin. Thank you for that, uh, follow. Much appreciated. Welcome to the stream. Uh, yeah, is do something wild. Thanks, s and Yeah. <laughs> I knew as soon as I got back there, I was gonna be like, someone's gonna be like, Brendan, here's how you messed up your syntax. I'm like, yeah. You forget how to write those. You do them so rarely. They, they, you really only do them in silly things like these, um, uh, like the, the programming exercise type stuff. Uh, so... You know what? I'm gonna do this. Okay, so we want to say console dot right line. Um, I don't know. We'll put in like a. Put in a little thingy there. I don't know. And then do a console dot read line. And uh, we're going to store this in uh, input equals that. And we'll say if input is null. Is that what comes? Uh, string is. We'll say null or empty. And not white space in this case, because white space we, in theory, might be translating. It's null or empty, then uh, keep going equals false. Uh, otherwise, go ahead and write out uh, the convert. Uh, we're going to do this, but with input instead of that. So instead of the arg, we're passing in that. So running it the old way, uh, oh, uh oh, oh, because I did a do while on it, yeah. In that case, I won't do while it, I'll just while it, because we set keep going to true since we wrote it that way. I don't need to do it, I don't need to do that one. You'd only put it in there if you were going to create the variable inside of the loop like that. But that works fine. See? Didn't even have to do it there. Okay, so I ran it with a parameter, so it spits back the SOS value, because that's what we sent in. Now, if I remove that from our launch settings, which is right over here, so this is what we actually said, so I'm going to remove the argument. Then uh, when we run it, You'll see that I just end up at this little prompt, and I can say, um, "Oh, I should have done a right instead of a right line, shouldn't I?" Um, oh, that's weird with the prompt coming back again. Hang on. We'll do it this way. I didn't want to write it this way, but we'll do it this way. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to do a write instead of a write line so that you're always at the prompt. Um, we'll do, well, we'll do that, you know. Which I don't know if I actually want it in there or not, but we'll, we'll see what it looks like. A. B, C, D, E, F, G, H. 
I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z or Z. I don't know whichever one you like. Uh, looks like looks like it translates nicely. And if I hit enter, it exits us out. So uh, that that worked pretty well. So it's at this point where someone can ask, okay, how would you test this? <laughs> and I, I I brought that up before we started writing this that. There's debate over whether or not you should bother testing these pieces because to test this, you have to add significant complexity. So that becomes the real question. Uh, what is up, Nougat Man? I'm Nougat Man? What? Well, I mean, I, I use Nougat. Uh, B of Essen is here. Yes, he is. Check out Play AI Dungeon IO. Finally, a good use for AI. Dungeon games and world domination are the only use for AI. Yes, S and B clearly. And uh, Class ZZ. Hey, uh, we are uh, writing a little program. We decided to do a programming exercise, so we just Googled for things and we're like, okay, Morse code sounds fun. Uh, so we built a little Morse code, like converter thingy and 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 piece that does not really do all that much uh, if we start adding some complexity to it we could start saying like you know handles words and uh sentences with punctuation and other things like that um that we could add that could be fun um what would be really weird is if we accepted these values, converted them into their number equivalent, and made like a Morse code calculator or something like that, which would be a, a, a more challenging kata, certainly a weirder situation. Uh, but then it's like doing something with the input. So something that I talked about that I, I mentioned that uh, we could potentially do is... Um, huh, excuse me. We took in uh, an argument, so if someone wanted to call this, they would say, like, um, what, they would they would actually type in, like, you know, dot backslash uh, coding exercise dot exe, and then, you know, this is the word to translate, right? And this is how they would call our program in order to actually get it to, like, do a translation, return it back. Um which isn't ideal. Uh, most people would want us to use standard input, uh, which... Uh, I believe this, a console read, will actually just read in the standard input. Uh, if I recall correctly, we could just do this. I think we can just read standard input. Yeah. Uh, Do, 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 console set in, redirect it to an input file, redirect it to an output file, uh, but I think if we just, I think if we just console read, I think it just does take uh, standard input and just grabs it uh, without any problems, so I'm fairly certain that's all we have to do if I remember correctly. 
Uh, but I would have to go test that one. Uh, Max, hey, greetings, welcome. You don't want to convert null. Uh, line 26, I'm converting null. Oh, you're correct. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yes, uh, I should technically do that, um, but we could really just say anything invalid on, and we'll exit out. Uh, so this could just be a validity check. Uh, There we go. <laughs> so there are actually a bunch of checks we could do uh, in in theory because uh, and we we could handle it here. We could ask the converter, like it should probably say what is valid and what is not valid. Uh, we could do it with a uh, with an output parameter if we really wanted, where you do like an if you know convert. So and if it fails, then exit them out. If it succeeds then, uh, you know, have the value as an output parameter is, is absolutely a valid way to do that. So, uh, if you were going to write one of those, you could do a try convert, which, let's show how to do that. Maybe someone hasn't seen how to do that. So if you do a try convert, um, we'll say out string result, uh, and it would return back a boolean. So we would say... Uh, first off, we'll do that, and then we'd probably say letters all more, uh, whoops, morse lookup dot contains key for x. return false if it doesn't and then uh, oh actually that was right as it was There we go. So this would be a way to write this as a uh, a try method. So if we wanted to write this as a try method, we would do this. Uh, and just to show that that does work, um, I am going to do this as well. Uh, we'll say try convert, uh, and we'll say whoops. Uh, out string um, result two. That should be true. And result two should be expected. And this, when we run it, cross fingers, should pass. <clears throat> Looks like it does. Uh, and just to confirm that it really is passing, uh, we'll do one we haven't done before. We'll do cat. Which means now there should be nine total tests. 
Yep, there we go. Uh, you're always torn before a try X and it convert returns some sort of conversion result object. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't get better in C sharp now that we've got uh, reasonable uh, tuples or tuples if you prefer, uh, because now you actually have the option that we, you know, if you didn't want to create an object for it because you're like, oh, it's one method with one call, you know, I just want to return back a string and a bool and done, you can. And you say, oh, I want them to have a name. And you could have, you know, success and, uh, you know, Morse and, you know, like, boom, done. You know, like, there's the type. It returns. It's fine. And uh, it's one of those, like, yeah, we have too many ways to do this. Because you could also just turn, you know, return back a conversion uh, result object if, if, you know, you actually need to have a type on it. Where's the eye converter? Yeah, we're not going to get an eye converter on that. Um, uh, technically, we could get a, we, we could use some of the existing interfaces that are in there, but no, we're not going to we're not going to go with that. Not for this one. Uh, I just figured I'd show that because uh, people are going to run into try convert. So if you ever see a try, uh, you know, a try parse or a try something or other, this is literally all they're doing is just doing that check so that you can get back a Boolean result. So if I were to call this one, what I would do is I would say um, uh, you know if uh, Morse converter dot try convert uh, input out string uh, converted Uh, then I would say this and just spit out converted. And then my else could just be keep going false. We just said, hey, you gave us something invalid, so we're going to bail on you. We didn't have a uh, we didn't have a value for that time to exit. Or alternately, this could be a return. If you really wanted to get uh, crazy, you could do one of these. And while true it. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Totally safe. No one's ever created an unintentional infinite loop by while truing. So. That should fail. Yep. Because I put in a space, and we never taught our Morse code converter how to do a space. Uh, so that's what it does. Uh, if we gave it space and other characters and all the special characters and things like that, then it would continue to convert them. Uh, but the way it works right now, as soon as it hits something it doesn't know how to translate, it just abandons all hope. So it can translate this, but as soon as I put in a space, or if I just hit enter... Uh, oh, ooh, enter doesn't get us out anymore. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Uh, but the number one will get us out. <coughs> so we should think about that. Uh, maybe if we got, maybe if our converter is empty, or what we could do is uh, we could do it at this point and say if um, not string is null or empty input and that. So now an empty string would also uh, exit us out of this loop. So either one would work now. Uh, and uh, Max, to answer your question, uh, someone suggested that we do some coding exercises today, so that's what we decided to work on. And that, uh, I, I like that one. That's pretty easy. Works works reasonably well. Anybody got any other suggestions for coding exercises that we could do? We just sort of jumped into this one today and uh, decided to do a little Morse code converter, because why not? Seemed, seemed nice, easy. Yeah, we just hit uh, Google at the beginning of the stream and did a, uh, like, a quick uh, check of things. That's still working? Hey, good. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, wow. That one's off. No suggestions? All right, we'll hit the internet. Oh yeah, we used to do that. Why don't we do that? Code Wars. Let's see what Code Wars has for us today. That sounds good. What do you got for us, Code Wars? Magnitude? What's magnitude got? Uh, no, 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 that's way too mathy. Way too mathy. Yeah, sometimes you just look at them and you're like, that's just math. <laughs> uh, maybe. Um, I, I just don't want something that's, you know, like, less mathy is probably a good way of describing it, Max. Uh, and yeah, Desert Griffin, there's, there's a lot of variants on those sorts of things. Um, by, by easy, I don't mean easy to do, I mean low complexity. There's not a lot of complexity in the, the Morse code translator. It was mostly, uh, the dictionary, and, and there was a bit of, um, bit of TDD that we did in there as well. So, uh, if, if anyone doesn't know those things, yeah, there's, there is, uh, uh it's not going to be easy and there's definitely some understanding that has to come in. I just meant that it's not one of those ones that like, <laughs> it requires layer upon layer in order to build it. Uh, will you make it? What? What even are these? Am I? Uh, sure. My language is let's, let's just do C sharp today. We'll simplify that down. Instead of popularity, how about positive feedback? <laughs> uh, find the odd int? Is this literally what I think it is uh, oh uh, did someone uh, try to send a link uh, copper beardy um, oh where'd copper beardy go Hi. <laughs> uh, Copper Beardy, do you have me on Discord? If you want to uh, just send a message in the Discord. Uh, I think, is it, is it permit? There you go. That's what you do. I remember how to do this. Alright, given an array, find the integer that it that appears an odd number of times. Oh, okay. There will always be only one integer that appears an odd number of times. Okay, yeah, we could do that. So count the integer and uh, see how many times it appears. Uh, it's totally doable. Uh, so static find int. Um, so they're going to give us a sequence. What are they expecting? A cert? Uh, five. So five appears three times, and the other ones must be an even number of times. Okay. We can do that. So let's do this. Uh, so for this one, we're going to make a public static dictionary, which I'm going to need a using at the top in order to do this. System.collections dot generic uh, and this will be a string of int int uh, and we'll call this um, number count equals a new dictionary uh, night welcome thank you for that follow much appreciated welcome to the stream 
Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to say for each uh, var, uh, we're going to say for int uh, i in sequence. We want to do number count dot add uh, number count i equals ah oh, first time in the list first time in the list um yeah i guess i could just group by and then that would be super chat okay well you know what plug in if you want to do it that way why don't we just try to one line it Uh, uh, it's Litany. Uh, welcome. Uh, greetings. Welcome, uh, Raiders. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I'll do this to say hello. Greetings. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to Dev Chatter. My name is Brendan. This channel is Dev Chatter. We are a uh, pretty welcoming community here, so feel free to ask questions, anything like that. Greetings, welcome everyone. Uh, we are just doing some programming katas today, so programming exercises and the like. Uh, this is actually the first Dev Chatter stream of the of the year, first of the decade, I guess, because I uh, missed last week's stream. Uh, I actually missed a handful of streams for the holidays, but. I'm back. We're going to be doing a bunch of streams again soon, and uh, we are actually coming up on our two-year anniversary of the stream uh, in just a few weeks, so uh, that should be fun. And yes, I will need to have a using for system.link up at the top. Uh, I technically am not going to need my system collections one anymore, I don't think. But we'll see, because I am not going to use that dictionary, because someone was suggesting that I do uh, this with link, which is probably going to mean that I'm going to uh, one-line it. So uh, we're going to group by that, and then we're going to do a select. So this is actually going to get complicated, so why don't I jump over into Visual Studio so you can all see a little bit better what we are doing. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is the code that we just copied out of their thing, so uh, select, um, uh, so we're going to group by that, and then we're going to select by, uh, what do we want? Uh, we want X because we need to know the number, so... We're going to do number and... Uh, whoops. We're not in JavaScript, we're in C-sharp. And count equals count. Uh, so, um, and then we're going to do single. Again, I said we're going to one-line this, but I'm going to, like, line break the one line. Uh, so, um, yes, we, we could do a, we, yes, we're going to do a mod 2 inside of our single, that's the correct plugin. Uh, yeah, I prefer to do the Visual Studio and then paste them back. Yeah, Carpet Breeding, so I, I did that in the past. Hey, Simon, uh, I've done that in the past on stream where uh, people were like, hey, yeah, we're going to do this, and I was like, like, yeah, I was doing it in the browser, so it's like, it's it's a pain in the rear. Uh, so we're just going to say where, um, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to, we're going to call that the counts, uh, and this is going to be a grouping. Okay, uh. Counts, count, 
mod two equals zero. Uh, whoops, equals one. And we're gonna take the number. Is that not? Uh... Oh, uh, whoops, dot key. My mistake. Messed that up. Okay, so uh, we're gonna say take our take our numbers, group them by by themselves. So group by the number we receive. Then we're gonna say create this new object that is both the number and the count of that number. And then we're saying grab the single one that should have a uh, a modulus 2 equal to 0. So, uh, modulus 2, just to explain uh, for anyone that doesn't know the math part of this, um, that just means the remainder of a division. So, if we were to take our count, divide it by 2, we'd have a remainder of 1. If you have a remainder of 1, that is... Uh, oh, uh... Yeah, no, I guess it isn't technically needed. No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't actually need that. We could just do it right here. Because um, we could just grab the key off of that and do it based on like the grouping counts. So people are suggesting that I could do it this way and remove that. And that is a simplified version. So if that makes it easier for people to read, I could write it like this. Um, for all I know, it might actually drop down to that uh, on its own. But I forget if it will. So, yeah, we don't need to, we don't actually need to do the the uh, the separate select if we don't want to. Um, I forget whether Link would simplify that or not. Probably not. Don't think they're smart enough to get rid of that and no op it, but. Either way. Yep, we did not technically need it. Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, so those pass. Can we simplify this at all? Are there any other are there any other things we can do to uh, shorten this, shrink it down, make it easier? Group by that number, group by count that key. No, not really. <laughs> ah, fuel snable. <clears throat> yeah. Gotta love having fuel snable in the chat. Always, always good for the best suggestions. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else we want to do with that. Yeah, I guess that's good. Yeah, just exclusive or it. If you exclusive or all the numbers, the even occurring ones will end up being zero. You're saying that if I take the whole set, okay, thanks. Yeah, I I I was thinking I didn't think it would be able to, so it is valid to remove it. How do you how do you apply that operator to the whole set though? Uh, I'm not even thinking how you do that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yep, yep. You win. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Oh god, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. No, you'd aggregate it, no, uh, that's, that's correct. You'd do it that way. It's just, I think, I think you would melt everyone's brain who saw it, and they wouldn't know what it would do. <laughs> Alright, so, uh... What is it? It's, uh, what's... I forget the order of this. Is it's It's the, um... Uh, and then the current... Right? Uh... What'd they say? Something like that, and then... Uh... Uh, rah. What's my operator? What? No, where's the dock? Thank you. Uh, where's my where's my Zor? Uh, exclusive or bonk. Okay. You thinking that that would give us the odd one? So aggregate basically says you're gonna re you're gonna take the value itself and apply a whole sequence of them. So you could write an aggregate instead of a sum, for example, by just doing an aggregate that added. So if that makes sense. <laughs> You're expecting anyone to say yes, exactly. That's what I mean. Like this, this someone could actually like the the link one. Like a lot of people would complain that you single lined it, but they can read it and figure out what that does. This, they, like it's it's simple, but uh, hang on, let me let me find out. Can we can we still try another solution? Does that actually work? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, because, right, like, if they match, they were going to or each other away, so, like, the only one that would be left would be this one, but that's still mind-bendy. <laughs> did anyone do this? I now want to look at the results and see if people did this. Did anyone? Did anyone do this? Show me the solutions. I want to see. Yeah, I'm sure it's fast. Feels. <laughs> I am sure it is fast. Uh, let's see. What what did people rate as clever? Right, sort by clever. That's where we're gonna find that. Aggregate. There it is. Of the ore. Yeah. Uh. Yep. People did it. Oh, see, this is just wrong. That's wrong right there. There's another one that did the aggregate. And this person switched it to an expression-bodied method, method for it. Which must mean that this is now uh, on C sharp seven. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Hey, stool penner! Thank you very much for gifting those five subs out to the community, uh, and glad to see a bunch of uh, nice people got them. Oh, and also fuel snable. Just kidding, love you, fuel snable. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that is nice. Wait, I thought that was... There we go. Max, if you want to take a look at uh, the Dev Chatter bot, you'll actually see we started that one a long time ago, but there is a playlist for that uh, to check out. 
And uh, welcome to the stream, uh, all new uh, Dev Chatter uh, subscribers. Oh, uh, yeah, Code Wars is the site we're on. Uh, so, if you go there. And, uh, so you can check out that one. If you want to see a simpler one that just does a bot right off the bat, um, there is a video to check out that is our color switcher. Uh, so, and, uh, yeah, Stool Penner, thank you for gifting those subs to everyone. Uh, if you did get one, be sure to say thank you to, uh, Stool Penner for that. That was very nice. Um, I will, uh, send a link real fast to the one I would suggest. Um, what is it? It's, uh, System Tray? Did I do a, uh, which one do I do the color switcher? Uh, this one? Is this it? I apologize if this makes noise. Mute the site. YouTube, no, uh, no stuff for you. Is this the color switcher? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm gonna share a link. This is the video to watch. Uh, video, video to watch there. Yes, lots of new Chatosaurus eggs. Uh... That YouTube video will, uh, uh, it is a really, really short one. It was designed to be done like single episode things. So we set up a system tray only chatbot. So, uh, you spin it up, it'll just be over in the system tray. And, uh, it's actually what does our color switching. So, which now that I think about it, it might, it might've just connected. So I might need to reconnect the display if that doesn't come up. Yeah, that didn't come up. So when it when it disconnected before, hang on one second. Is it there? Uh, well, I've been programming since the mid '90s, so uh, <laughs> I've been programming for a long time, just with different stuff. Um, I I first started programming like '97, so it's it's been a while, '96, '97, somewhere around there. So. Um, the, uh, uh, I, I've only been working, uh, like, as a programmer at companies for, like, you know, 15 plus years. Uh, I was programming before that, obviously, because, you know, many of us start as hobbyists and then eventually make it our day job. Uh, I've been programming with C Sharp for 14 years now. So... Yeah, 14 years. It would have been 2006 when I switched from... Uh, so before uh, programming in C Sharp, uh, I was primarily in uh, C++ and Python uh, back then. But I still am a big fan of C Sharp. Uh, when did C Sharp 1? Uh, yeah, it was around, it was around then. Uh, there were some early versions of C Sharp before that that I know some people have used, but like... C Sharp is basically a uh, turn of the millennium uh, technology. Oh, see, that's funny. This is the aggregate, but like, instead of doing the aggregate, it's just, you know, doing it like this. Uh, so someone had asked what the how, how an aggregate works. Uh, so why don't, why don't I show that real fast since we're doing that? So we did this complexity with the aggregate, but we didn't really explain what we were doing. So let's show that. Uh, what's a good way to show it? We'll add a test to this project. <laughs> yeah, so that, that code that, uh, SNB is doing there where he's typing in the, the color and changing the color of my overlay. Uh, you just If you just type in a color name, that's what that video shows how to do. So, um, And the fun part is you can actually specify colors uh, like this as well. So you can do, you can do hex codes for the colors uh, instead of just... Uh, instead of just, you know, doing by name. <clears throat> 
That's what I'm going to do, Fuel Snape. I'm going to do a quick uh, example of how to do uh, an aggregate. Uh, example one. Actually, we'll do this one as sum. We'll, we'll basically write a sum as an aggregate, and that'll be a good way of explaining it. So, um, we'll say numbers equals uh, new set of numbers. One, two, three, four... Right? That's a good set of numbers because we all know what that value is going to be at the end. So, if I were going to do this, I would say um, numbers.sum, and then I would say should be 10, right? So that's how I would write it using this, the link sum operator, or the sum uh, command, right? The if I use the expression for that and comes back and obviously has the value of 10. Uh, but alternately, I could write that using an aggregate. And an aggregate, the cool thing about it is you have control over what it's doing. So you can use aggregate for a number of things that you can't just use a sum for. Uh, the source for aggregate is open source plugin, so people could go look at what it does, but I think it's going to make most sense if we just explain it. Um, so let's do this. Uh, and I'm just going to say A uh, plus B. And I'm going to say should be 10. So what I've written here is the aggregate of A and B with a, you know, doing the operation A plus B each time should be 10. Now, if I didn't mess anything up, this will come back as 10, and it does. But I could write some different methods. Um, <laughs> for those coming from a function, aggregate is fold left. There you go. Yep. So essentially, all that we're doing is this. So if aggregate looks confusing, um, I mean, it kind of is. Um, I, I can't really argue that. Oh, is there another way to write it? Oh, T accumulate seed. So basically the way that an aggregate works is the reason they say accumulate is there is, there's essentially a, a value that is of the type of the return value that you are accumulating values to and altering over time. So uh, you can use aggregates for um, things like uh, it's common for, for bitwise operations uh, for where you have like, oh, I've got a collection of um, um, of enum values that I want to or together to get the, you know, set of them. That's a way to do it. Uh, finally, a dev chatter game that was not rigged. I take it SNB1? Yes, he did. Congratulations on winning the game of Rock, Paper, Scissors. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you want to multiply instead of add, you want to multiply all the numbers together, you can do that. And what would that be? That'd be 2, 6, uh, what, like 24 or something like that. Unless I mathed wrong, which point I might have. Summing the squares of numbers? Yeah, so there's there's a lot of things that you can do. So notice I was able to just multiply all the numbers together instead of adding them all together using an aggregate. And that's basically all I did there, was just multiply that set of numbers together, and hey, it works. So aggregates pretty much just apply this operation to, you know, like, apply an operation to the whole set, and it's going to return back the same type. So you could do a string builder that way if you wanted. Uh, so we could do, like, string words... Um, Hello, uh, dev chatter. Whoops. You know, it would really help if I learned how to type. <laughs> Some days, I tell you, I just don't, I just can't type. Uh, you know what? We're gonna do that. Now it won't yell at me about that not making sense. 
So we could just say, uh, and this, by the way, don't do it this way. This is a terrible way to do it. I should be clear. Uh, this is this is an awful, awful thing to do. Uh, which actually, do I want to do it like this? What is this going to do with it? I actually don't know what this is going to do. Um, should be hello dev chatter viewers right if i didn't get the order wrong which i may have we'll find out if i messed it up uh uh looks like it worked so that's the result and just to confirm that it does work i'm going to make it fail that way we can Yeah, so all it did was just, you know, sum them together. And basically, each step along the way, there is an existing uh, thing. So this A is like, you can, so it's usually called, like, they usually call it the accumulate. And this is like the current value. So you can think, like, I have an accumulated value that we're working on, and we're applying the current to it. So when we were doing the numbers, would B plus, yes, Hydro, that's correct, yeah. Yep, so if we flipped them, yep, you you have the absolute understanding. That was, that was brilliant, Hydro. Great, great question there. So if we flip them around, does it reverse it? And the answer is yes. Uh, so we ended up with viewers dev chatter hello instead of hello dev chatter viewers. Because when you when you think about that, it's take whatever the current value is plus the previous one. So this is always this would insert at the beginning. So yep, that was a, that was a great question there, Hydro. That, that was good good understanding there. Um, uh, use it to process account transactions, return a report. Uh, yeah. So um, yes, Simon, you could use it at a higher level and other things like that. You can apply whatever you want in there as long as the return value of this is the same as the two input values. You can absolutely apply whatever you want inside there. Uh, do you ever get uh, hung up on a f on for each loop for whatever reason? I always seem to run into issues understanding. Uh, the for each loop is a little bit of a weird one. It's kind of like a shorthand for something. So if for if for each loops are confusing to you, um, you don't actually have to write for each loops. Um, you sort of can avoid it. Uh, I think this will let me convert. There we go. So if a for loop makes sense, but a for each doesn't, you can do this every single time. So now I could just, you know, whoops, console dot right line word. And, and that's totally valid. So uh, you don't actually have to use for each loops because it is the same thing as this. Basically all a for each loop is doing for you is just assigning a free variable. It is just a loop over the same set. So if you're used to just looping over a number every time and the for each loop is weird, you can do this. Uh, the problem with using uh, for each loops that a lot of people will run into is if you're planning on modifying the collection that's usually where it's going to get you because if you are modifying the collection i say that it was that that it's like a shorthand for this but underneath the hood it's actually doing it differently so it's not really doing this this is just the way that we can approximate it um so which i i, I don't know if someone was going to yell at me for lying because i sort of did but it's one of those you can think of it working that way but just know that it doesn't really do it which is why you cannot, and I, I want to stress this, you cannot do this. Uh, words dot, oh, oops, that was an array. Let me list this. I get a string. Instead of a, uh, an array. Make it a list instead of an array. Whoops. Okay. So if you've ever tried to modify the collection inside of a for each loop, this will sometimes yell at you about because you're not allowed to remove the items from the collection that you're for eaching over. Uh, and the reason for that is that um, 
it's not really doing a for loop. It's not really doing the index access the way you think it is, because what's really going on is it's actually it's actually grabbing your enumerator in order to do a for each loop. So it's using this uh, value uh, to actually do that. So what is it? It's uh, yeah. So like it's using these like move next and things like that. So it's using the internals of the collection to know how to get to the next item. And so because of that, you don't want to modify the collection while you're working with it because it isn't really doing the index based access. So if you are going to be removing the items from a collection, you want to do a different approach. So if you really are going to do removals like that, then you want to do this. You want to do like a uh, reverse for loop on the length of the collection uh, like this and then uh, you can remove at that location so you'd say like words dot remove at and then specify the index because then it would continue on to the next one and the reason you need to go backwards is because when you remove an item from the collection everything with a higher number than that is going to be messed up because you changed their numbers. Uh, so max, when you remove the item, the index would still exist as long as there were a number that came after it, because everything after that would get shifted down, which is why it's actually an expensive operation on a list to remove items out of the middle, but <laughs> meh. We're, we're just explaining how stuff works. On, on small collections like this, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be a problem. So we might say like, you know, if uh, uh, word whoops words i uh, equals dev chatter, then remove at i right. So like if we did this, then that should get through the whole set and down here we're gonna get a test failure, but we'll see why the test fails. And it should be the, uh, it, it should just be missing the word dev chatter. So, yeah, so we expected hello dev chatter viewers, but we got viewers hello. And remember ours is currently reversed, so. Uh, let's flip it back so it makes sense. Current and accumulate. There we go. So that's our aggregate testing and the nice thing is when you see that you go, oh, okay, hello viewers. So it removed the word dev chatter and that's how you can remove from a collection is you always need to make sure you do that. Whereas if I tried to do that with a for loop and a for each loop instead, words, string, word, and I said, uh, if word equals dev chatter, uh, then I could say words remove and say word I think it'll yell at me about this I'm not a hundred percent but it should it should yell at me about this let's put it that way <laughs> you do not write that code that is bad <laughs> there we go so here's here's what I was talking about collection was modified enumeration operation may not execute so you remember how I said uh, it's not actually doing that index based like eye checking. It's doing a get enumerator and doing a move next. So that's the problem is it's saying, hey, I can't do this collection modif modification because you're currently enumerating my collection. Like it's kind of like it's saying, whoa, hey there, buddy, I'm, I'm stepping through this set. You can't just start removing while I'm doing this. And that's the collection basically saying, hey, buddy, don't 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 remove these and try to try to you know enumerate at the same time so it gets angry when you do that uh, performance is always relative to how long your network IO and DB queries takes so and don't get too hung up on prematurely uh, yes yes Simon is 100% correct there that is a huge thing so in the 99% case of programming uh, for any kind of business application development of any kind uh, like whether it's you know web development or applications or whatever you're probably talking to a database or the internet or IO from the user or something like that there is a certain threshold of user doesn't want to wait 
as long as you're not hitting that point where the user is feeling impacted by it, optimization is just going to be a, a problem. That being said, there are things you want to avoid doing. So the obvious pitfalls, you do want to do those. So don't do things like concatenating strings together repeatedly. So when I did that aggregate of concatenating the strings, don't do that. That one can get your performance hit right quick if you're doing like large sets. So if you're going to concatenate a thousand, you know, million, whatever things together, yeah, that's going to be terrible performance. Um, so the idea is find where the issue is, fix that one, avoid the really obvious bad stuff, and try not to get stuck in a, a bad spot. Um, uh, yes, that's what Fuel Snable's talking about. Uh, you can get away with writing code that has bad performance, you just need to avoid the really awful performance. And and the reason why is if, if, uh, if your user has to wait for 100 milliseconds for your program to do something, they're not going to care when they had to wait 300 milliseconds for, you know, a call out to the database. So uh, it's better for you to fix that one, the call to the database if you can, than to fix, you know, your code, uh, which obviously <laughs> fix both if you can, but uh, users don't care about, like, the five milliseconds that you saved. If, if like, if you're not at least saving 100 milliseconds, they probably didn't care. String can cat doesn't matter if you do 10 short strings once in a while. Yes, Fuel Snap is correct. That's why I said, like, unless you're doing tons of them, even that doesn't matter, which is why it doesn't matter here. But if we did this, like, 100 times, then yes, it would be bad. Uh, a good example of that would be... Um, you know what? We've got time for one more. Let's do one more program. New project. We're going to do one of my favorites, everyone. We're going to do one of my favorites. Primes. Uh, and... Do I not? Do I have time to... Maybe. I think I'm going to skip the test. We're just going to do this one so that I can uh, just show it to you. So we're going to do prime numbers real fast. So we're going to write a program that prints out prime numbers uh, below 100. Uh, so, step one. For any time you're doing any kind of a program like this, if and especially if someone asks you to do this in an interview or something like that, run your program as soon as you possibly can. So I'm going to set this as our startup project. And I'm going to do console write line i and run my program. So sadly it's loading on the other screen, but you can all see I printed out all numbers. And you might say, but that wasn't what you wanted. You wanted prime numbers below 100. And I say, yes, but I wanted to make sure the program was running and you know, clearly make sure that I'd gotten that. So, um, wait, hang on, what's going on? Uh, uh, trolley, uh, tr Trollet, welcome. And uh, Max Magus, hey, thanks. I didn't know you hadn't followed earlier, but welcome, thank you for following. Uh, have a good one. See ya. Uh, put it differently, only performance tune based on repeatable metrics. Yes. Yes, exactly. Simon's correct. Uh, you want to make sure that you can, can find and show that something has poor performance, uh, before you fix it. If you can't, then you're probably fixing the wrong thing, which is what we as programmers do. We usually fix the thing that didn't actually cause the performance problem. Because we're like, yeah, this is faster. It's like, yeah, but you didn't save enough. <laughs> you weren't doing that operation 10 million times. Okay. So, how do we determine if it's a prime number? Well, uh, divisor. Well, divisor is less than i. Let's change the name of i to possible prime. Okay, so, actually I wanted that there. Bool is prime equals true. And then I wanna say, uh, if possible prime mod divisor equals zero. So this means if the divisor divides evenly into the possible prime, then we know it is not a prime number. A couple of changes we need to make. This needs to start at two, not at uh, zero. 
because we don't want to divide by zero, so we'll set it to two. Well, it's less than that number. Uh, is prime, that, and then um, if is prime, then we're gonna print it. Okay. This is the simple way of writing this program. So, oh, I shouldn't have started at one. My mistake, we start at two. One is not a prime number, two is a prime number. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen. That looks like the prime numbers to me, but I don't like them being written that way. So, how about instead of printing them that way, we instead put this in a method? So, let's put this in a method. We're going to extract out a method that says uh, find primes. And instead of making it void, let's have it return back a list of integers. And we'll call that var primes equals find primes. So now instead of doing this, we're going to just um, add it to a collection. So we'll say list uh, of int, we'll call it primes equals new list of int. And when we get to this point, we're going to say primes.add uh, possible prime. That's what we're doing. And then we're going to say return primes. Okay. So that method works out great. And then what I was doing was uh, for each primes prime console write prime. This is going to leave a, uh, whoops, prime. This is going to leave a trailing comma at the end, but it's fine. I'm not going to bother fixing it right now. And yes, I could yield this. Uh, so 2, 3, 5, 7, 13, right? So those are the prime numbers. Clearly, I wrote a, a prime uh, fetcher program, little finder thingy. Um, no, I'm not going to use the C of Aristophanes. <laughs> Definitely not doing it. And yes, I do know it. I'm one of the only people on, like, uh, probably one of the very few people that even knows what you're talking about. But yes, that's where you instead start with a collection and you straight, you know, it's, it is a, it is a different way of doing that. But yes, uh, yes, I, I could, I could also have yielded that if I changed from a, uh, from a list to, uh, uh, an I enumerable of, of these types. I could just yield out the value each time, uh, that we had a, an actual one, but, I'm cool with the list for now. Okay, so how else could I have done this? Well, instead of doing that, I could have just done uh, string um, output equals that, and then I could do, you know, uh, string, uh, let's say, uh, whoops, output uh, plus equals prime, um, plus that on the end, right? And then I could just do a single console dot right at the end, right? And just do output, uh, whoops, output. And then this would also work, right? Totally valid. Look at that, see? Does the same thing, totally safe operation. No way anything could go wrong. Nothing could possibly go wrong doing that hang on hang on just wait it it's gonna be done soon probably maybe oh geez look at the time everyone uh well yeah wasn't that quick huh wonder what's going on <laughs> This is the, are you disturbed yet? Like, it's still going. Okay, now there's a couple of reasons for that. It's not just the right line. Uh, the, it's, I actually don't think it's the console right line just yet, because there's a couple of other things that we can do to save us a little bit. Um, let's do this. Math, we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of optimization here. Um, so, we're going to talk about math. The largest divisor that any number can have is its square root. Um, 
no number can can have a divisor larger than it can sorry they can have divisors larger than their square root but that number itself is never a prime so you can do this alternately what we can do is we can use the collection of primes that we're building as the way of determining whether or not we've done that either one is a perfectly valid way of optimizing this a little bit but that saves us some effort there um, additionally as soon as we have found it we can break out of here that's another little optimization we can do so now when I run this it's still gonna be slow so I've optimized that out and look it's still slow like gah we saved like the majority of its work and it still took that much time so you saw like that was still taking seconds like I drag that over under the screen and we wait you want to see what happens when we don't uh, do string concatenation we go back to our other way of doing it and just print them out uh, no uh, fuel snable I did uh, less than or equal to And, uh, <laughs> uh, Diego, I'm guessing, uh, welcome, thank you for that, uh, Twitch Prime sub, welcome to the stream, and yeah, so, if you, if you watch, if we switch it back and we just do a four, uh, for each one, and, uh, console right line it, we'll console write it just, uh, just to go back to the way it was, uh, and we'll say prime, like this, we'll, we'll get rid of this one. So we won't do the string concatenation this time. Yeah, like it's going before, like you see it go before I can put it on the screen. It's like, yeah, there it is. So in this case, the slowdown wasn't the calculation or anything like that. It's the amount of time it takes to write to the screen that slows us down. And uh, it's just one of those like, whoa, okay. So there's there's a bit of a toss up on that. So. The point that I was trying to make is that it takes a while to concatenate before it even starts doing anything else, which uh, it only gets worse as you go to larger numbers. So technically we can go, you know, higher and higher and it can do all these calculations very effectively. Do, do, do. Yeah, we went orders of magnitude higher. I think I need to add another optimization. I think we went a little too high. <laughs> let's remove one uh yes exactly uh so the comment in chat there of doing a string dot join and uh yes a string builder or a string dot join will do it a lot faster all right we're gonna have to optimize out that other part if we want to make that work Uh, so basically what we're saying is instead of doing this with the string concatenation like that, we can instead, uh, oops, get rid of that, uh, and replace this with a string dot join. Uh, and this also fixes the comma problem that I was talking about, but I wanted to demonstrate like why uh, what we were doing before was wrong. Whoops, got those backwards. Uh, should be separated than that, and then, uh, you know what, I'm going to put this right inside the console right line, and instead of even bothering with that output variable, we don't need it. See? Done. So, like, before I can even get it on the screen, it's already done, which kind of illustrates the thing that was slow the first time we did it was concatenating all the strings. The thing that made it slow the second time was that it was doing an individual write operation every single time, so it's just the time it takes to write a piece at a time. And then this last time, it's just fast. Now, uh, to explain why, because uh, I do want to get that point across, strings in C-sharp are immutable. So, what do I mean by that? Uh, and this is the case in a number of languages, actually, so you got to be careful. Uh, so, if we do this... If we said string A, you know, we'll do B, a lot of people might think that what happens is we take this value and we just put B on it, right? So the result is just going to be AB. But we don't do that because this value has to still be here and that value has to still be there. 
so it actually makes an entirely different string in memory each time you do that. And you say, okay, but what's the problem? Well, here's the problem. If I do our whole sequence, let's say we have the full alphabet inside of a collection, I add them all together, it made a string A, B, it made a string uh, A, B, C, it made a string A, B, C, D, it made a string A, B, C, E, and on, and on, and on. And it made all of these strings and threw them away. Every single time it made a new one. And so when we were concatenating all those prime numbers together, all C Sharp could do was just keep on creating more and more strings over and over and over. And if you saw the size of some of those strings, because you gotta remember, we were putting a million records in it, it's making these massive memory allocations to put all these strings in over and over and over again. And you go, oh, oh yeah, I get why that was slow. So these are the kinds of things like, that when we say like, you really just need to avoid writing like the pitfall stuff, like that's what usually gets you. Now in this case, this is slow because in order to find prime numbers, we're having to do a lot of calculations. There are some shortcuts we can actually take, uh, and that is this. Um, we can go, instead of doing... Okay, I didn't explain how we found our prime numbers. So the way that we found our prime numbers is we said, take a number that is possibly prime. And we then said, take every number that was, you know, smaller than it and try to divide that in and see if it, if it divides in evenly. If it does, then that's not a prime number because prime numbers are numbers that don't have divisors except for one and themselves. So seven, for example, there are no numbers that divide evenly into seven except for one and seven. The trick is that there are, uh, If I'm checking the number 97, for example, you might say, well, is it divisible by uh, 4? And you'd say, nope, it's not divisible by 4. And I would ask you, did you need to divide by 4? And the answer is no, you didn't need to divide by 4 because you already divided by 2. If it were divisible by 4, it is also divisible by 2, so you already checked that. And you might say, okay, is it divisible by 6? Well, you don't need to check if it's divisible by 6 because you already checked 2 and you already checked 3. And if a number is divisible by 6, you know it's divisible by 2 and 3 also. The same thing goes for checking if a number is divisible by 8 because you already checked 2. Is it divisible by 9 because you already checked 3? And, and so on. And you don't have to check and see if a number is divisible by 25 because you already checked 5 by the time you get there. And so what you can realize from this is the only numbers that you need to check are primes. Now, if only, if only I had written a function that was keeping track of prime numbers and had them in a collection, that would be super, super useful. If I had that collection available, I'd be able to just use that to see if the number was prime. So that's actually the secret of this is you don't actually have to check anything, I know, if only. So that's the funny part, when someone uh, someone had suggested yield, which is a great solution, by the way, uh, but in this case, I don't want to use it because I want to have a collection available of primes, which this gives me. So I can instead do a for each prime and say, um, do this. Say, if it's divisible by a prime, then it is not prime. And I think I have to start the collection with 2 then. No, I don't have to because 2 just doesn't get checked and then it ends up in here. Yep. Now, I can also do another check if I want to see if I've gone past the number. Uh, because if I get past the square root of the number, then I don't have to keep checking either. There, So the reason to do this is there are a handful of numbers that you have to check quite a while to prove that they are prime. It's actually the primes that take the longest to prove. So... So if you really want to do this, you can check this. Uh, 
you can do this and say get the you can figure out what the limit is uh what is it math.floor yeah we can math.floor it right Uh, although I could actually just leave it as a double now that I think about it, because I can compare an int and a double and that's fine. Double, limit, and I don't need to floor. I can just leave it as math square root, and then just say, um... Uh... X is less than that. So... Less than or equal to the limit. There we go. So this is like the second fastest way of finding prime numbers. Uh, the sieve that I think uh, was Fuel Snable that was mentioning, uh, yes, there there is actually a way of finding prime numbers that is faster than this. A uh, good deal faster than this, actually. Do I still have my large number in here? I may still have a very large number. No, it's not. Did I did I butcher this? Hang on, I might have butchered this. Did I leave a no? Well, I might have done something either way. Uh, not terribly worried about it. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Do oh. Well, either way, I thought that was kind of fun. I like doing the little primes thing. Uh, you could use an any for this? An any for which thing? Oh, yeah, if there are any that, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, you could do, uh, yep, you could totally write it like this. That would absolutely be valid. Uh, if there are not any, or it's going to put that as an all with a, with a not. If all of them are not equal to zero, then, then that's a prime. And just to be able to confirm it, I'll set it back to that to make sure we didn't mess it up. Yep, we didn't mess it up. So yep, yep, you can totally write it that way. Takes a little bit of time to do a million. Uh, yeah, so hide, uh, so hydro. Yes, uh, we we've made some changes there that probably do mess with some of the stuff that we did. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind: that the all will short circuit. So the moment it finds one that fails, it should bail on this and not come in here. Um, it should not bother to check them all. It should be able to just say, "Hey." Uh, well, actually, this will be able to do... Uh, you're right. Um, actually. No, it breaks. I think it... I think it... I think it breaks. I th I'm pretty sure as soon as it finds one that doesn't, it gets out and does not actually run them all. Uh, I'm like 90% certain that all will break. I'd have to check the documentation to be certain, but pretty sure. Either way, a uh, couple of things... Does this button work? Yes, it does. Good. A um, couple of things that I did want to mention to everyone that's here in the chat today. Uh, if you are not a member of our Discord community, I recommend that you check it out. Uh, I tossed a link to it in the chat there. Uh, 
our Discord community is just a nice place where dev chatter uh, members talk outside of the stream. Uh, as I said, we're actually coming up on our two-year anniversary of the stream. Uh, I started uh, Dev Chatter uh, in February of 2018, I think, unless I'm off by a year, which one has been, I think it's only been two years uh, time. It's hard to, hard to keep track of. Uh, but either way, if you want to check out any of our source code that we do here on the stream, uh, aside from our one-off like coding exercises, you can find pretty much everything we do here on the stream over on our GitHub at github.com slash devchatter. And we also have a YouTube channel at youtube.com slash c slash devchatter where you can find all the episodes that we've done in the past for all the various things that we do here on the stream, uh, everything organized by playlists. Uh, so if you are interested in looking at that, um, I know someone came in here earlier was wondering about uh, writing a Twitch bot, which we have our dev chatter bot. There's a playlist of like literally tons of videos where we were working on that chat bot. Um, but you could also look at the one that I posted in chat when we were doing that, which is a link to our... Uh, our cons our uh, system tray only application that is what does the colors uh, so which you can't see right now because someone changed it to black but those they just turned yellow uh, we made a console application that just watches for colors to be mentioned in chat if someone just mentions a color and that's all they say uh, it will in fact change the color of the stream to whatever color you mentioned so yep you could change it to blue uh, or I could use a hex code to change it to green and it will do that and so um, we actually did that in a single just one stream uh, set up a little program that does that and it will feed that automatically to whatever web page you want now I set up a web page that does the colors outside of the stream but so like for my animation to do that but it'll send a message to that to just do it so you can you can see how to how to wire that up uh, but it was a neat little thing we did a video of that um, I like my little one-offs because if I can do it in one day it's uh, works out really nicely hey Rexy greetings welcome um, and uh, yeah also uh, if you didn't click the follow button is the best way to get notified when we go live here because uh, uh, right now uh, my schedule doesn't have me able to stream during my weekly stream so uh, people that were here in the first year of dev chatter know that uh, I used to do Mondays Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays uh, on the stream uh, but lately we've only been doing uh, Saturday streams, but I do want to do some weekday streams and if you want to make sure that you get notified when I go live of those, uh, be sure that you're following on here and our Discord's another great place because I always ping the Discord uh, when we go live. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go with uh, Medi as a uh, shortened version of your name, but welcome, thank you for that follow, much appreciated. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the stream today. Um, we will be back at least next Saturday, if not sooner. So I'm hoping to do a weekday stream, but if it doesn't happen, we will be doing a uh, Saturday stream. <laughs> yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, I did some things with my chat points. I did those to our emotes. And for anyone that did end up getting a... Uh, uh, either uh, subscribed today or got a gifted sub from Stool Penner... Uh, those are the fun emotes that you get to play around with. And anyone else that's in here, thank you very much for hanging out today. And uh, we will see you next time. Let me roll my credits because I almost forgot to roll my credits. See, it's been a little while. Almost forgot to roll the credits. Credits. See? Uh, so I want to make sure that I thank uh, SNB and Miha each for their single bitty. Uh, I want to thank our moderators, Crimson Green and SNB and Stoolpenner. Thank you for helping out with the stream today. Uh, these wonderful people followed our stream, uh, so be sure to thank them because they are great. And uh, there were subscribers for uh, resubs for Crimson Green, Nate, uh, and Mr. Shoji sub for the first time, Renee, Fuel Snable, Riggin. Uh, where was SNB? Oh, SNB was before I went live. Yes, and SNB, who wasn't on the list, but since he, he resubbed before the stream went live, he wasn't even on there. Um, so either way, uh, thank you for hanging out today, everyone. Uh, we will see you next time, hopefully before next Saturday, but who knows? Either way, have a great week, uh, and enjoy the rest of your weekend and, uh, take care. Happy coding, everyone.